Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Inside Battlefield. My name is Tom, community manager here at DICE. And in case you missed it, season 4 11th hour is now available with a new specialist, gadget, vehicle, new weapons, a new map, battle pass and more. So come check it out. With me today are Nika and Emmo again. Welcome to welcome to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Tom. Hello Hi, Tom. again. <laughs> Welcome. Um, You're welcome to have me back now. Welcome to have me back. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know you, could you please introduce yourselves again? Yay. So, hi everyone. I'm Nika. I'm a lead producer on the Seasons theme. Um, I have been here again. <laughs> I don't know. I've just happy, broke my happy, brain. Just happy broke. to have me again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for having me again. <laughs> You're Hello. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, my name's Amo Mustafi. I'm also a lead producer. Uh, I'm on the quality of play team, uh, looking at basically weapons, vehicles, gadgets, and the meta uh, of our game. Um, and I'm also happy to be here again. <laughs> well, welcome back. Just doesn't have a broken brain like I do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, let's take a look at the weekly radar, what's available for play this week. So we have Discover Breakthrough, which is uh, a mode we brought for the first time I think last week where if you're under rank 11 you can jump in uh, to a special matchmaking pool so it's a very good way to learn to play the game if you don't want to get absolutely wrecked in multiplayer just yet uh, we have Seasons Conquest Flashpoint Breakthrough the Battlefield World Tour is back Battlefield 3 Gunmaster and 2042 Tank Superiority and of course on Friday a new Friday Night Battlefield which is always I won't spoil, but please do come and join us on Friday. It's a new experience every week, and it is awesome. Um, Nika, Imo, anything specific you are looking forward to? Oh, of course, it's a thanks a priority. All right away, I'm gonna have so much fun. FNB, but I won't spoil it either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. So uh, today we are focused on listener questions for season four. First, though. I would love to hear from both you, Amo and Nika. What have you seen so far now that season four is live? And uh, how are you and the team feeling? It's been pretty cool. Um, yeah, we've been, I mean, I know I've been watching uh, some streams, uh, going to social media, Reddit, Twitter, YouTube. Trust me, I'm lurking everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Creepily. <laughs> Silently. <laughs> um, it's been... It's been really cool to to read the the feedback so far. It seems the players uh, really do like um, the season four. They like the content. They like the battle pass. Um, I know. I think Amo will. I mean, and Amo actually were talking about the map mm -hmm. um, and the feedback on the map. But so far, it's been quite a lot of positive feedback, uh, and also just looking at our numbers, also pretty great. So far, it's been a fairly smooth launch of the season, and uh, we really like the feedback so far. Yeah, I think absolutely the momentum is carrying forward from 3.2 with the class rework and it's carried into season four with Blasco coming in as the new recon. Um, I think her gadget has been well received. There's been a lot of conversations around, you know, the amount of spotting that happens in the game. And then Blasco offers a, a real solution to that problem, uh, at least for a, a limited area anyway. Um, some interesting feedback around kind of the amount of audio for her gadget. So I think we're going to look at those as well. I think when there's three or four of them in the same area, there's a lot of beeps and boops yep. and buzzes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be looking <laughs> at that. Um, but I think it's been some really interesting interesting feedback. I think the map um, <clears throat> has been... Has been has, has been received well. There's some polarization on it. The the combat areas I think are very well received. The triangle of death where you have I think kind of E, C, and D uh, is a is a really fun space. The interiors are so well put together, and it's a really interesting kind of warehouse spaces that you go into uh, that provide really good I think infantry gunplay. Um, it forces you as well when you go outside to kind of pop a couple of smokes to kind of get safely to the next building, which I think is a is a fun kind of tactical area. I think what we are seeing though is the separation of the of the capture points by the elevated areas is creating issues there in terms of line of sight. So there's a lot of um I don't want to say campers, but you know, people who like to be on high ground oh, constantly firing. Oh yeah. I wasn't looking at you directly. <laughs> 
Um, but we're seeing a lot of that kind of a lot of people kind of within kind of those kind of intermediate kind of spaces firing into capture points. So I think that's something we're going <clears> to <throat> we need to kind of keep an eye on, see how much of a problem it continues yep. to be. Um, bear in mind, this is 128 players, not 64. Uh, the map, the Ripple Effect team kind of built and they their focus was around 64 players. So the, 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 the play there should be a little bit more interesting when it kind of that number drops down as well. So we'll see how that how that affects the map. Um, but I think overall it's, it's, you know, it's been received well and yep. we want to kind of continue kind of monitoring it a little bit. I know one of the areas of feedback we've had a lot is breakthrough where people have felt that it's been very one-sided, very lopsided. Looking at the data now, um, with the maps team, it's, uh, I think 51, 49 in favor of attackers. So it's fairly even. So I think yep. there's a lot of, um, <clears throat> uh, probably personal experiences that are leaning into this. Uh, for, for for a lot of people, but so far the data is showing a fairly even split. So, but we'll keep monitoring that and see kind of how that changes over the weekend. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's still too early to say, um, like, what will be the next steps. But for now, we are monitoring the player feedback, we are monitoring the data, and then we'll yeah. see if we need any adjustments. But so far, we're uh, seeing it's been uh, pretty cool. Yeah, we're seeing chaotic fun, and uh, again, yeah. a <laughs> shout out to Ripple Effect who created the. The season four map, uh, in case you weren't aware, um, which is pretty awesome to see because I think it's the first post-launch map they created uh, yeah. outside of the, the portal maps. Yeah. yeah, So cool yeah. to see a new map from, from the team. Mm. Um, awesome, thank you. And, and as a reminder, I think last month, end of January, we, we brought the return of the class system back to the battlefield. And now, a month later, season four on top. So we have class gameplay and a new season. So... If you haven't had a chance to play yet this year or you're just coming back, it's uh, the meta has shifted. Yes. Classes are back. Yep. There's a new season. There's a lot lot going on right now. So it's uh, it's an exciting time for the team, definitely. Uh, there's so much happening. We've been very busy. <laughs> so um, You mean we are very busy? <laughs> we are very busy, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I'd there's love like to no say <laughs> that stops now, but it doesn't. We will continue to be very busy, but fun busy. It's uh, Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff happening. Let's start with a very easy one um, that we maybe had a little bit of feedback about. Will all chat become available again in Battlefield 2042? Ow. So, uh, yeah, so we've actually finished the work on bringing back all chat uh, to 2042. It's planned and it's uh, going to be returning in a future update. Uh, that's what we have on that information right now. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to the uh, friendly, conversations and the friendly banter, friendly banter <laughs> between <laughs> the teams. Yeah. Great, yeah, that's that's good news. Uh, we had a lot of feedback about this. Happy it's returning. I know all of you folks wanted it back, and it's coming. Um, next question from Racer four three five six. Would it be possible to bring in multiple loadouts for each class? I have different playstyles for each class, so. Um, with the return to the class system, mm. you now have a single loadout per class, so that's different from yeah. what players are used to. Um, what is your your thoughts here? Um, so the return of the class system, the idea was to go to a kind of a cleaner, more simpler implementation of the system and kind of really lean into the class gameplay. So the decision was made to go after one loadout uh, per class. Um, and that obviously saved a significant amount of work as well for the team. So it's not a it's not a free or easy thing for us to necessarily add more loadouts uh, to this. Um, so while it's something that we might look at and it's actually on the list for us to kind of investigate, it's not something that's necessarily high priority right now. I think we have other things in other areas that we'd like to investigate first. Okay, thank you. Next question from Protoman23. Why is Breakthrough not available in Portal? Uh, question we've had quite a lot. So we'll try and answer as much as we can today. So the thing is, since the breakthrough layout need to be separately added to the portal and to do all maps, um, it is not. It was not something that we could done just yet, because obviously it requires quite a lot of work. Um, so we wanted to prioritize that work. Um, on the other areas of portal and our maps, um, and it's still in our list that we would really that we would really like to do in the future. 
but we don't have any commitments yet, so we can't share when in the future. But it's something we are looking into it and uh, we would like to do. I think we've we've started like testing, etc. already. Yes, but yeah. we started the work, okay. um, but it's, it's we still, again, it's, it depends yeah. where in the development process you are, how much um, you can commit to when it's coming. Yeah. Uh, so at the moment we're still working on it. I think I think in the last podcast, Nika, you talked a lot about that we have to make choices about when we do what, because there are a lot of yeah. things we want to do, so we cannot do all of them at the same time. And I think that's kind of what happened for Breakthrough yeah. and Portal as well. This is one of those examples yeah. where you have to make those difficult choices. And even now, it's. Uh, I'll be very very frank i mean if something pops up that's even higher priority for our players we might down prioritize it and tackle other things yeah. and then con- going back and continue um simply as, as i said you don't have unlimited people in no time um, yeah. but we're working on it yeah working on it started some testing so hopefully uh we hopefully we can bring that back in the future we've heard the feedback definitely <coughs> um next question from denny on pc never heard of him never Hi, heard denny. of this guy can we expect changes to transport helis uh, like the hand and condor, hind and condor? Actually, we are exploring ways to lower this vehicle's survivability and the sturdiness against the incoming damage. So uh, we are looking into doing the some adjustments in the future. Um, I don't have anything more than that. Uh, maybe yeah. Amon knows it's uh, one of his themes. No, it's, uh, I that's, know they're looking yeah. into it. No, we are we are looking at kind of the survivability of these things. Um, they do take a fair bit of damage right now, so we're looking at what we can we can do there. So we're kind of looking at the damage models there. We're revisiting some of the fundamentals in terms of kind of the repair mechanics uh, for these uh, for these kind of titans of the sky. And again, of course, there's a lot of feedback coming back right now against the uh, kind of the the main kind of weapons these these vehicles have so that's yep. something that we're aware of and we're, we're looking at as well yeah so to confirm we've definitely heard your feedback and we are making changes to them um but we don't want to go into details today because we don't know when those changes are coming yeah because they might trickle down throughout the patches and the, yep. the, the, the improvements that we are doing so uh they can read it in the patch notes yes just <laughs> keep an eye out for future patch notes uh they will be in there and we'll give more details about the context, why we changed it. Um, next question from Darkstar Sierra. Is there any chance of full XP ever coming to solo co-op in the future? <coughs> so our stance on this is that multiplayer is, is king or queen or regent or whatever title we want to use for um, the multiplayer. Royalty. The royalty. It's the top dog. Yep. Um, and so... I think we always want the the multiplayer experience to be where players feel they are kind of gaining their experience and, and that's where kind of most of the, or how it feels most fair, it's kind of where to go and kind of where to gain that experience. With that said, we know that there is a, you know, a fairly significant proportion of people who are in the solo co-op area and they too need to feel that they're progressing, I think, at a decent pace. So I think our goal is to always make sure that we're matching the that pace in an appropriate level to to what you're seeing kind of in multiplayer so i think we'll keep revisiting that um and seeing kind of what that percentage is but I, in within season three i think some kind of keen-eyed uh kind of co-opers or soloers would have seen that we've already made some changes so you can now kind of gain ribbons at a at a reduced rate compared to what you would in multiplayer, but it's now available there as well. But we're going to continue making those further changes to solo and co-op and see um, how bet- best, sorry, how best to kind of match those two paces together. Um, it's yeah. it's a sliding scale. So I think to summarize, we want to make sure it feels worth it to play solo co-op if that's your preferred choice. But you like the intent is like multiplayer is the yeah. main experience for Battlefield 2042 so that's where you will get the most progression compared to uh solo co-op great thank you um uh next question from the real raiden 1 uh what is your favorite part of the season 4 update so that's an open question to the both of you i think i have uh, not the usual answer um I will not argue that the the weapons are really, really sweet and the new specialist is pretty cool. However, my favorite thing is the new vehicle. It's the uh, Brawler. I played so much 
um, during our play test with it, I tried out all the different spots. Um, I just like the the I just like this wheel vehicle. I love to play with my uh, with my squad. I love the like the gameplay it provides you. Um, so and obviously, as uh, you can guess, I really like playing with ground vehicles. For a while, the railgun tank was my favorite thing, but now this is uh, the Brawl has a special place in my heart. You like throwing grenades on people from the vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> and obviously, um, I say ground vehicles. I'm not really good with uh, air vehicles. Yeah. yeah, it's a beast of a vehicle. It's good. Your favorite thing? My favorite, favorite thing? I have several favorite things with this one. You can have several. Can it doesn't several? have to be one. I think the AC9 is an absolute beaut of a submachine gun. Like Just to be able to hip fire people in the head at close range is such a satisfying feeling. Um, but the, <laughs> there's a lot of other stuff that I think that kind of for me pops out. I think on the on the mini map, for instance, now that we have the uh, kind of if the player is above you or below you when they're oh, firing yeah. is, is just helpful. such a lovely quality of life improvement. It makes it really easy now to find, you know, the Boris mains who are sitting in a corner <laughs> with an LMG and their turret. Of and course he had to mention the Boris. <clears throat> the drone dog. <laughs> it's a valid way to play the game. <clears throat> I just choose to play it a different way. Um, there's uh, the music as well for the map. I think it's phenomenal. Oh, Actually, nice. the the actual kind of the end, kind of as we're going into the end of the round and the music mm. kicks in, it's... it's it, it really gets kind of the blood pumping. So it's, uh, I think that for me is, is a really enjoyable part of it. Um, but I think for me right now, the thing I'm loving the most is the new insertion flow. So our experiences and modes pod have delivered a shorter, tighter experience now mm. uh, for uh, deploying into the game. I think they shaved off around 42 seconds mm. or something along those lines in terms of when you get into, when you're about to deploy into the game. But I think the biggest win for me is the fact that there is no auto deploy anymore. So if you're like someone like me who likes to tweak their loadout and you're in that menu, you're looking at your weapons, you're looking at your gadgets, previously you get pulled out into a cinematic and it was frustrating. Now that's gone. You can tweak your loadout and as soon as, you know, you're ready to deploy, you can then deploy as and when you want. It's also nice as well because you miss the little bit of the rush of everyone who's trying to get into vehicles, so you can kind of be a little bit more tactical which is nice, but it's that experience that I think is really, really fantastic for me. That's the standout for me yeah. in season four. It's great. It's uh, So I think our Q and, our previous Q&A session was, I think it was episode three when, when both of you were on and we talked about this. So that was before, after season, <coughs> sorry, after update 3.2 came out, but yep. before season four launched. So we already gave a glimpse of that this was coming and now it's live in game yeah. the, the improved insertion yeah. flow. We so need that's to leave really something good. for surprise we can't exactly. just buy all the beans spill <laughs> yeah. all the beans um, and I love how Amo like Amo likes like quality stuff me I like new shiny things you like I just <laughs> you wanna yeah drive vehicles and almost uh, the insertion flow oh it's snap <laughs> it's true. I'm just yeah. trying to make life better for everyone <laughs> You're like, but I want to shoot people with my real gun tank. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. And blow buildings. <laughs> and, yeah, it's quite a difference there. Um, cool. Thank you. So on to the next question uh, from RG3T Company. Ripple Effect apparently developed a new Flashpoint map. Is Dice Sweden still working on maps for 2042, like Season 5, for example? Or is that also handed, handled by Ripple Effect? No, so Ripple Effect have built the, they did build Flashpoint. Yep. Um, it was a map that originally, I think we sp spoke about it briefly last week. Yep. It started off as a, I think it was as a TDM map, that kind of that central area. We played well, it, yeah, it was your, we, yeah. we played idea. it, we really liked it. We asked them to kind of, we expand it. They became one of our pods within kind of <clears throat> the 2042 team. So we work in the same kind of flows and the uh, systems and feedback and reviews that we had with all of our other pods. Um, so, uh, but they would just happen to be based in LA. Uh, so I think they did a, a good job with, with, with that. But, uh, the map reworks, for instance, right now are being handled here at, in Stockholm, as well as the season five map. So that's being handled uh, with, by our team here in Stockholm as well. Cool. Um, next question from Bleezy. Will you guys be adding assist counts as kill? Weird that it's in the past games, but not this one. <clears throat> yeah, so um, there's a lot of context around this one, uh, so we can probably spend uh, 
Shout out to Anders. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to Anders, yes. <laughs> engagement lead. Um, so there's a lot of context around this one, and I think we can probably spend the better half of the the, the podcast talking about it. But essentially, the, the decision for, for 2042 was to focus on the uh, outcome rather than the intention of, of someone's act. And so that led us down to the area of, you know, kills, death and assists instead of just KD. So you see that actually pretty much on the scoreboard that came in after launch as well. Uh, and the idea was that we really kind of lean into uh, assists as a mechanic for the game. Um, I think as an outcome of that, when we're looking at the number of specialists we have now, I think we're at 14 plus the number of gadgets we have, which are above 14. <laughs> Um, we see that maybe that assist pool is being somewhat uh, diluted in terms of its meanings and what's happening there. So I believe we're going to, you know, we'll keep an eye on this one and, and see what we can do uh, and see what we want to do with it. Um, but that's something that I think Anders and his team are kind of very close to uh, and they're keeping an eye on it as well. But it was a conscious choice. To it was, at, yeah. At, yeah, during yeah. production time, it was a conscious okay. choice. Um, but certainly, I mean, I think most of us do remember this count as kill someone who, if you remember BF1, Martini Henry hit someone in the leg, 90, 90 damage, someone picks them off, you get a kill. It felt great. We just don't know if that was the experience that yeah. kind of translated over to 2042 in terms of what we were doing with all the gadgets that we had. Great. Thank you. Next question from the 27 poker. Are more class balance changes coming? <coughs> Boris. <laughs> Someone say Boris? Um, oh, are we going into Boris' discussion now? We can go into Boris' discussion. Do you want the professional answer or do you want the personal answer? Personal the, answer. The personal answer. <laughs> well, we get, so we are looking into upgrading <laughs> the Boris third. No. Yes. This is my team. <laughs> but. And, until, and while I'm a dice, that is not getting buffed. It is... It, personal and I'm okay. I'm going to go with the personal answer here, and I apologize to my team, but I'm going with the personal answer uh. here. Okay, I would nerf this thing to the point where it's firing marshmallows and kittens at players, and then it can target vehicles. That's absolutely fine, but for players, it's sending out hugs, warm hugs, and cocoa is is what it should do for players uh, against. I'm in the infantry. Alex theme. We we need we we need the upgrade. I'm sorry, we need the upgrade. I'm. Just, Lean into my earlier answer that I had for you, <laughs> which was around identifying where players are on the minimap. From a player perspective, I personally believe it's very frustrating when you go into an area and there's a prone Boris with an LMG and a turret on the other side of the room and a robo dog all firing at you. Now, I'm not saying that's not a skillful way of playing it. I'm just saying there are players who would get frustrated by that. I am one of those players. He literally just said he hates me. <laughs> so it's fine, but we it know It is that. a valid way to play. There is another valid way to play, which is with skill, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that later. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> the thing is, I'm aware of it, so like, he doesn't that know. No, we'll, no. We'll, we'll see Boris. But uh, sorry, to go back to the question. <laughs> the actual question. Uh, the actual question. There, we are reviewing our specialists and kind of the balances that are happening there, and we will kind of look to continuously make changes. So we're not going to bring in new specialists into season five. The focus will be, I think, like we said in the last Q and A, to balance our specialists. Yep. Um, and if I get my way, Boris will be tickling you with his turret. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll we'll see about that. But yeah, this question is always yeah. We are always looking into. Um what the players and the data is showing us and do we need to adjust no. something? Yeah, and I think we, we have changes big and small and in every update we do across specialist vehicles, weapons. So keep an eye out for the upcoming uh, patch notes uh, for what else is changing. Then we have a question from Berkland PSN. Probably plays on PlayStation. Um, any plans on adding any more Prime Gaming loot in Season 4? Uh, so the thing is, we currently don't have any plans, uh, but we are continuing our monthly rewards for the EA Play members. So if you have EA Play membership, you will get a monthly reward. I think it's like a monthly cosmetics. So if you want extra shinies that aren't necessarily in-game, EA Play is the way to go now. Yep. Uh, nothing in the future, or in the near future for Prime Gaming. No, okay. I'm sorry. Uh guess someone called the fun police again, Nika. Yeah, right. I know. Someone keeps calling the fun police on me all the time. I don't know why. Uh, next it's question. Who's your from... main Boris? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Like I feel like this after the podcast is over, there will be more words to be said about <laughs> Boris. Oh no, no, this is just usual day for me and Amo. Okay. It's fine. Okay. This is why we were great together. <laughs> <laughs> Next question from Candid Revolver sixty two: Will portal weapons get skins and attachments we can unlock? <laughs> Ooh, this is the fun one. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> <clears throat> um, I mean, that's something that's on our list and that we're looking at. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Again, we're not spilling the beans this time. Um, okay. Stay tuned. Very much Wait stay tuned. I we heard say. feedback on this. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. I would stay tuned. Stay tuned. Next question. Runners with three R's. Two. Any plans on aircraft mechanics rework? So at the moment we are aware of the feedback for jets, uh, but we don't have any further plans to share at the moment. Uh, I'm sorry. I think our main focus right now is on the the transport helicopters. Correct. We've seen the feedback mm-hmm. around jets, but yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> the feedback we mostly got was from major changes and we don't really have anything planned there right now. No, that's uh, true. Cool. Next question from... Oof, this is a lot of numbers. Gustavo, 86725886. That's his way of giving you his telephone number. Yeah, (laughs) thanks, Gustavo. Um, Can we expect thermals on tanks? Yeah, I mean, I think so. That's something that's always been part of Battlefield, right? Three and four. Flipping between kind of the black and white thermal and finding the infantry guys that are coming up too. So this is something that we'd love to do. I think we'd like to have this. And it's, it's on our list of kind of future improvements. So that's something that we're looking at. I mean, you obviously know that, yeah, it's it's a yes for me. Hopefully, maybe one day, yes. We're looking into it. Because you love playing with ground vehicles and you want thermals. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I think in the past, last podcast I said I really like the thermals. Oh, yeah. And now I'm like, I just okay. uh, shared that I really like to play with ground vehicles. Well, if you ask me, yes, please. Cool. Next question. From Golden Riggles, any possible way to get community events listed in the UI menus, for example, like Friday Night Battlefield? Mm. So this is something I know we discussed it within the team and it's something we would like to do, but we don't have any concrete information to share at the moment. It's something we are looking into it. Um, We would really like to uh, find the right way how to highlight the modes created by our very passionate and very talented community. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> a number of us tend to jump into to the community-created modes. So shout out to the bfportal.gg crew. They do yep. a great job yeah. of kind of Definitely. putting pulling all that together. And um, we we spend a lot of time, I think, myself and, and a number of other leads kind of playing those modes. Um, and there's a lot of really good stuff there um, that we'd like to kind of carry on through. So that's something that I think we'd love to bring in. Um, but as kind of Nika said, it's something that we don't have anything to share right now. We're very aware that we have a passionate and talented community. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, yeah, again, shout out to uh, bfportal.gg and all the portal creators who make awesome modes that we really enjoy playing. And yeah, we love seeing their playing. creativity and what they come up with. Um, cool. Next question from Pixels. Are more gadgets planned for the future? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, yep. we are, we're, we're working on the season five gadget now. Uh, and I'm going to tell you all about it right now. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'll just say, uh, wait, wait yeah. and see. Wait gonna and see. Wait you will like season five. I think I will get murdered by the brand and marketing team if I tell you what it is now. So I'm going to wait until we release it properly. I guess as the community under. manager, I probably also wouldn't be happy. Oh, yeah. But also I would be excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I have conflicting feelings if you, sp- if you spoil something right no, now. No, I'm, I'm not like, going to hmm. spoil it. But we are working on the season five gadget now. And cool. it's uh, something that we'll release kind of more information as we get closer to that. Yeah. So follow up question from me on gadgets because we changed the way gadgets are tied to classes with the return to the class system update Mm. so the sph explosive launcher that we brought with the season four update is now an assault specific gadget Mm. and in the previous seasons we had a new gadget that was available for all specialists everyone Mm. so i would love to to add context to this question can you maybe explain more about how we now develop gadgets for the future since we mm. develop them for classes and not for all specialists. So what we'll do is we take a, a bird's eye view of kind of what gadgets we have available uh, and the type of gameplay that they bring. And if we see 
one area is fairly imbalanced or doesn't have kind of enough to play with, that's our, our main area of focus. Or if we see a play style that's emerging that needs a counter, we'll look at bringing a gadget in that can kind of help counter that. Um, so the team takes a far more kind of holistic view of it now, uh, knowing that we need to make sure that any gadget we bring in has either a counter or some kind of balance uh, within the game. Whereas previously, you create a, a, a gadget, anyone can use it. That also created problems of, you know, interesting combinations being built um, between kind of certain specialists and, and, the, and the free gadget. Okay. Thank you. Next question then from one gamer dag. Gamer dag. That name confuses me for some reason. Anyway, what is one thing you are most proud of in 2042 as a team? So to well, the both I'm, of you. I'm already took dibs on his on on the answer, so <laughs> he can go first. <laughs> I'm I'm really proud of the live team. Um, I think the the team jumping onto the project after it uh, went live kind of transitioning their mindset from production to live in a time when the game was not well received and wasn't in the state that we wanted it to be in, uh, to kind of take that challenge kind of head on and bring the game to where it is now. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud of what they've done. Uh, of course, you know, I think every single person on the team wants to do more and wanted to do more during this time, but it was a really difficult challenge that, that we had. And I think we've done well to kind of dig ourselves out We're where kind of where we wanted to be at launch now, uh, maybe a little bit ahead. Um, so I'm really proud of every single person who's kind of committed and stayed on the team and kind of pushed us to this point. Um, big shout out to, to all of those people. Um, we can do it without them. And as I said, he already stole my answer. So <laughs> now I have to think about something else, which I can't, because it is. That's the most thing that I think... Both me and I'm are proud of. Um, and it's, it's a team. Uh, just looking at the, I mean, as being a seasons producer. And as I like to say, like all the seasons are my little precious. Uh, but I think it's not my little precious. It's all made by the, by the team. They did all the work. Um, and it's been really amazing seeing how the game evolved from the season one, two, three, and now four. It's been a hell of a journey. I loved every minute of it, even when it was difficult, even when it was fun. Yeah. Um, it just, it was just so such a great journey because of the amazing people uh, we worked together. Yeah. Would so, have been would have been really easy to give up, but I think they really kind of took on the challenge. Yeah. And we didn't make it easy on them either. We had a lot of expectations from a lead production p perspective of what we wanted to change and where we wanted to take the game. Um. You know, we had that razor of going back to what a classic Battlefield felt like. And that was going against a lot of the stuff that we had done during the production phase. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people there who were like, do you really want to make this kind of U-turn? They gave their feedback, they gave their input, but they were all on side. And they accepted that challenge and, and they really hammered it home. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's the thing I think we're most proud of. Yep. For sure. Yep. I agree. Shout out to the team. Shout Big out shout to out team. to the team. Again, what they did, it's uh, it's uh, mind-blowing. Seriously, I still, you know, there are some moments, I think, especially when we launch a new season, I think the fourth one is now like the full, so like full mm. year one cycle, um, is where I sometimes have to pinch myself. It's like, oh my, like just, you know, taking a step back and looking the work that's been put into and how we evolve the game into what it is today is Again, it is. I can't. Sometimes I can't believe it. Yeah. And I've been. That I also been part of that team, and it feels yeah. amazing. It's also. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I think that the players get to see. Obviously, that we create that goes out. There's things that that don't make it out based on yeah. a, a number of a number of yeah. things. But one of the things that I think that the the community and the players don't see, but they should know, is that you know this team. Uh, there's a lot of talk of like you know this isn't the dice that 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 shipped so and so and so and so. There's a lot of veterans still here. But there's a lot of new young developers that are coming through that are as passionate or not as or more passionate than, than than people that we've worked with in the past. And, you know, they have learned a lot of lessons and they're carrying those forward to kind of the next projects that they're going to. So there's a lot of information that's that I think is being flown that's going throughout the studio into kind of the future and what we want to build. So I think that's what I'm really proud of is the fact that instead of shutting down they a lot of people kind of absorbed the situation and the information they learned from it 
and it's it's informing us as we move forward. Um, so it's uh, it's I think a really exciting time for for Battlefield and the franchise. Yep, I'm really I looking agree. forward to seeing what comes next. Me too. Excited for the Just future. Walking around the office, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited every day to be there. Yeah. It's great to work with the team. I feel bloody old though. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Dude, well, like, I, I honestly. think I said, I think I was, I think I mentioned on the stream. Uh, I think we had the charity stream last week. Yeah, I'm the elder millennial. <laughs> oh, elder millennial is what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. elder that millennial. Was, oh, that was quite elder millennial. I never heard that before. You didn't? I did not. Someone now, keeps referring yeah. to me and Nicholas Ostrand as the senior development team. I'm like, can you please stop using the word senior? <laughs> I've been gray since I've been in my twenties, and now I'm like gray, gray. And it's like, can you <laughs> please stop? Um, well, we're looking up to you. Yeah, well, you're not that short, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <then. laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, oh, it's our, it's, our, it's our boy, Denny on PC again. And I think I, I, I formatted Denny's question in two. Mm -hmm. So he's probably going to call me out for this on Twitter. Anyway, can we expect balance changes to transport vehicles? Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, so we are looking into push pushing vehicles uh, more into specific roles. And with that direction, there will be uh, some changes coming. However, details will follow at a later time. So it's something that we are looking at at the moment, but don't have much details to share. Keep an eye out for the patch notes. Exactly. It's one of those. Keep an eye out on yeah. patch notes. Yeah. We don't want to share spe the, all the specific balance changes that we're making today. They'll be in the patch notes. Exactly. In the update that they yep. will be in. Yep. Um, but to summarize, we are making changes to the transport helicopters, but also the transport ground vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, great. Next question from blank, because I forgot to put in the username here for the person that asked the question but you know who you are um where are persistent servers oh let me give you a hand so um we have those in portal now uh for battle pass owner sorry battle pass owners uh, they're multiple <laughs> i think there's more there's more than one owner of the battle pass there is uh, so if you have a premium battle pass you have access to the um Persistent servers in the portal. Yeah, um, I think we brought it in with season end of the with season two, end of season two. Either end of season two or beginning of season three. I cannot fully remember personally. I'm pretty sure it was the two point two. Uh, yeah, two point two right. patch update, yeah. and then of course uh, with season three, uh, we reminded people, hey, we have uh, persistent servers. Now. Yeah, I think it was late last year when we still had sunlight in Sweden. Before the dark winter time, so yeah, that, that's, that kind that's, of, like that's I remember. Like I was you remember it was sunlight. Just I was riding a block and there was still sunlight, so it was before winter. <laughs> that's how like <laughs> which is like light. August. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but you can turn on the future if you have the battle pass. Go to the options menu. There is a, a, a checkbox there to turn on persistent service future, and then if you go to portal you will see if it is enabled or not. So yeah. if you have the battle pass, then you have that persistent server. Um, and there is a blog on our website uh, that details how it works if you want uh, another refresher. I but think yes. you actually wrote that one, Tom. There was like a very detailed, nice, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. step by step instruction. How do you use persistent server? Exactly. Servers? So go check it out. But they have been in game for a while. But I think most people uh, may have forgotten or they're not aware. But it's a cool future. So use it. In, in case you there. missed it. Yeah, we in have it. In case you missed it. Um, another question here from also blank, because I also forgot the username here. Has the team has the team thought about blocking the tugs gadget from Blasco, similar to how launchers are blocked from Liz? Do you want a long or short answer? Long. <laughs> Then I'm gonna look at Amo. <laughs> oh, short. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back to you. No. <laughs> okay, a little bit longer than no. Um The thing is, we are. Con I mean, continuously reviewing the gadget combinations that can be done with our specialists. And of course, we are assessing if our um, current blocking rules uh, still hold up. Uh, the thing is that right now, um, we have no intentions of blocking um, the TUGS gadget from Basco. Um, however, that's not a no for the future. It will depend uh, on the method, it will depend on the 
yeah. the, the gameplay, how the players are using it. So it's something that we constantly, continuously review. It's, it's, it's early as well. It's like by the early. time yeah, it's like we're it's recording one. this, the yeah. season has been out for like two days. Yeah, yeah today is two days. Yeah. yeah. So so we need we need much more data on that. Yeah. And then we'll see how the Tugs plays with Blasco's gadget. Great. Uh, cool question here from, again, a lot of numbers. Imperat 4039644. I I have quite a few phone numbers here already. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> when, yeah. when is the seasonal event going to start, and which kind of rewards are planned for it? Oh, I think this one is for me. This is you. <laughs> yeah, this that's you. for me. Uh, so, guess what? I can't share a lot at this point. Um, there, I know there's a public knowledge that there is a themed event coming later in season four. Um, I can tell you. I can. Tell you a little bit more, as in, is going to be. Uh, we are. Hmm, we've been working on a new mode, which will be very interesting to hear feedback. And uh, you will see the rewards. There will be rewards uh, that you will have to earn by playing uh, the themed event. Um, you know what? Guess what? You'll just have to wait and see. But it's coming later in the season, so you have to wait uh, some more time. The rewards look cool. Oh, they are so cool. They are cool. I mean, this is like, when it comes to the rewards, uh, I think this might be my favorite Oh, don't so do far. this, because now you guys know what it is, and I haven't seen it, so I feel left out. So the, the listeners are going to feel left out, and then you two are just going to sit here looking smug at each other. Yeah, exactly. Because I've seen them. I'm I've looking seen very smug them. right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they are so cool. They're, they're so cool. I know. Um, you can, we can, we can share well, the, we've already shared the name, so maybe you want to throw that one uh, out there again as a refresher. Yes, because it's uh, I keep I keep thinking of the previous <laughs> themed events because of course yes. thank you brain. <laughs> so the this season themed event is Leviath- Leviathan Rising. Did I don't actually know how to pronounce it. Is it Leviathan? Leviathan. Leviathan Rising. This is I know I remembered. Um, I always struggle actually pronouncing this word because <laughs> Leviathan. Leviathan it's, Rising. Yes, as a Dutch speaker, it's it's a weird, yeah, combination of letters for me. As a Croatian speaker, yes, it's very <laughs> weird. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. Incoming during season four, rewards will be cool. Stay tuned for details. I can details. say there's going to be some green color there. That's all I can say. Okay. It's very... <laughs> okay. Green color. Cool. Okay. Next question from me. Do we want to do the cookie of the week? <gasps> yes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we have mul- like we have multiple we things have? on the table we have, now. We have multiple because you brought your own cookies. So I they have. They are not cookies. Well, they're okay. So first, yes, they are not cookies. So I did prepare to have uh, scones for breakfast, and yes, um, I'm starting. Yeah, I'm I'm continuing with that discussion, which Amo, by the way, already refused to eat. I had my scone for breakfast, and I'm going to have a second one now. Uh, so apologies, I'm going to take another scone. What's so the, did you bring the milk? Or that was already here, right? Okay. I think the milk was there, and uh, yes, I did bake them myself. They're not warm because I baked them yesterday, um, and I think it. Uh, to be fair, they are good-looking scones. Thank you. But my, I tried my the best. look on my face is one of disgust. The fact that you're not having it with afternoon tea. Um, and I'm like, and I'm just eating it alone with coffee. There's no clotted cream. No, no, I did. Bring you some have jam. marmalade instead of jam. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, what's the difference? It's like she's trying to offend all the British people. Yeah, that was the point. Uh-huh, okay. Uh-huh. Well, you've succeeded most mm-hmm. likely for people mm-hmm. who care. I'm yep. not really that into my scones, but I'm just going to take the negative side of this just just because why not? Yeah, and uh, th- and, th- and I pretty much brought it in so I can ask the question: mm. Are the scones like are scones for breakfast? No. Can I? Add, I'll just throw it into the group because this this whole scone thing is a giant thing going Ooh. on in dice right now. But yep. I don't think I ever had scones. <laughs> Like oh. what, what is the scone? So, like I, I'm it, trying it now, and then the and then the and other. And this cookie. is really funny because I never had proper scones because um, I actually been I think to UK once mm-hmm. and I haven't tried scones there. So this is just a British recipe I found and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm made. So and Amo doesn't want to try to actually give the judgment is this actually a good scone or not? So, I can't. I don't know. I, I've made I've made my stance quite clear. <laughs> so to try one now would be betraying myself. Mm-hmm. So, I can't do that. And I do have to say, there's a shout out to Alexia. She will love this. I I'm very so. sorry she, she can't be she here and try. breakfast side? Oh, no, 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 no. She's the one that started the whole scone gate. But did she start it for breakfast? Or? Um, no, she started at 
the, the it's, it's absolute like no like you can have scones for breakfast if you want if you live in America maybe yeah well, but that Britain. scones are not for breakfast <laughs> not if you're British no, so scones this is just a chocolate chip cookie I think, right? which chocolate. is the way forward for cookie of the week let's not destroy it by adding with milk no I mean, that's fine no that's nice yeah That's the way we should eat cookies, right? How about yeah. that I am eating the chocolate chip cookie and I also have a scone, scone that I've already eaten nice. from in my hand. So I'm basically holding two cookies right now in a jar of and a mug, glass of, and like a mug of mug. milk. Living the dream. Yeah. I am living the dream. Multitasking, Tom. Good stuff. So, um, anyway, the verdict is the chocolate chip cookie was very tasty. Also, this may have been my first time actually eating scones. Also very tasty. It's a bit dry, but because dry. It, it, it's missing the jam and the clotted cream. But we had milk, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of both. And I'm saying clotted cream because like, I know what it is. I haven't tried it. We usually eat it just with butter and jam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, just like, no, hell no. There's an, there's another question about scones later, I believe. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it soon. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. Okay, back to Battlefield. Okay. Yeah, back, back to, to battlefield. battlefield. So, next question from Locker Room Team. <laughs> Any plans to bring back com <clears throat> Commander or Squad Leader abilities? So, I think um, mm. we've spoken about uh, Squad Management on the previous uh, Q&A episode. So, mm. maybe a, a refresher about what we've... Uh... So, that's Squad Management is something that we're looking at uh, at the moment. Um, so, we'll have more on that um, in the future. Uh, commander Mode is, I would say, separate to Squad Manager. Yeah. Um, And so that's something that isn't currently on our plans to, to bring back. Do we feel comfortable that uh, to say that squad management uh, is not planned during season four? Yes. Oh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. No, no, it's, it's coming later. Yeah. It's coming later. To bring it later. Just, uh, so everybody knows, because I've seen quite a lot of questions there, if we can expect it during season four. But it's... Um, I mean, we know you're yeah. impatient. I get yeah. it. I know it's it's been. I know it's been quite a wait. But I'm sorry, we have to wait a little bit more. We need to actually uh, finish the work. Yeah, but uh, it's 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 in progress. Yep. Then the next question from Claimant Eight: Will medic and ammo crate be reworked or buffed that they no longer have a cooldown of supply and health ammunition? Does that uh, question make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm reading a bit weird, but yes, there we it's go. It's a scone. It's weighing you down it's a scone. now. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I think that's something that we'd like to do, uh, and it's on that on on the list of improvements that the team that looks after gadgets is looking at. So again, keep an eye out for the patch notes. Yeah, I don't have a timeline for that because uh, there's a there's a list of improvements that we go through. Um, so that's mm. something that we can uh, update as we kind of get closer to each uh, release. Okay. Yeah, and pretty much like I mean, I've seen it with improvements. Is uh, we we we're going to the list, and then as soon as we think like, okay, this is we're happy with this, oh, let's ship it, and that's when we know when it's coming out. Yeah, and we, for a bit more context, we don't usually want to give a timeline because we would love to have it in. For example, we would love to have a change in update four point one. But mm -hmm. as Nika just mentioned, maybe there are a bunch of other changes that we need to get out first, so they will go in four. That one, and then the change we wanted to originally get into 4.1 gets moved to 4.2. So um, we don't want to disappoint you if we say it's coming in a specific update and then we have to move it to the next update. So that's why we usually don't give uh, an exact timeline about when something is coming. Yeah, because when it comes to the improvements, the, the, the good side of it, and this is why we don't commit to a certain patch, is that... Um, In, in the case, like you reach, because of course during production you have deadlines for each of the patches that you need to hit. So if uh, they are not on the call that we want to, yep. we can just mm. postpone, like hold it, work on it, and then release the next next patch. Um, and that's I would say the main reason, one yep. of the main reasons why we don't want to commit because we want to have that flexibility. So we can, when we do the improvements, we are happy with the quality uh, that we are releasing to the players. Great. And sometimes it takes some more time. Yep. Um, next question then by Perfect Promise Seven. That sounds like a very lovely name. Perfect Promise. Um, seeing that there are no multiflex sectors in Flashpoint, is that going to be the philosophy going forward? Guess what? It is case by case scenario. So it will depend on the map. This is what's worked for the Flashpoint, and another map. Um, yeah, we'll we'll just decide what works for that map. So it is very much case by case scenario. 
uh, yeah. this is not a new guideline or uh, of sort. And I think it's it's fun as a team. We can experiment when yeah. we release a new map. Like, hey, for this map we want to do this, and for the next map we're gonna do the other thing. Exactly. So, yeah, it's it's never like oh, this is everything now going forward. Correct. We keep correct. And I think that's correct. that that's the fun part. Like, why also the each of the map would feel different and play differently because you have this flexibility. Like, okay, what works for this map? Um, mm. I'm looking at Amo if he wants to add something. No, he's shaking his head, it, thinking it. about scones for breakfast. Yeah, I think I think he. <laughs> I'm broken now. <laughs> cool. I broke. Hell, everyone with my scones. I'm sorry. Uh, next question then, from For Goodwill. Do you guys have any plans to update some rush layouts? In particular, kaleidoscope mm. and exposure are a little bare bone. <clears throat> yeah, it's um. So the rush layouts is when we kind of go back to kind of the picking and choosing aspect of what we're what we're looking at. So our level designers are the ones who would have to kind of look at that work. And so it's about finding that right balance right now in terms of kind of fixing the bugs that we have for the reworks and the new levels that are coming out, as well as working on those current reworks as well as the the new maps. So it's it's about making the priority call uh, between new maps reworks and then redoing rush. With that said. It's something that we have spoken about, and it's something, and we're aware of those issues. And it's about just finding the right time to be able to do that uh, with the ongoing reworks, as well as the new map being built. So I think that's something that actually your team, Nika, is looking at. So I think once that window opens up, we'd look at Rush. Okay, and I think uh, just as a shout out, there is we're working on the season five map. The next map reworks are for discarded in hourglass. Yep. There's still so much stuff to do and on the horizon that's coming soon mm. or in the near future. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of work on maps that we're still doing as a team. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm covered is something that we are aware we are looking at, but it's not at the moment. The, we're not working actively at the moment as we are working on other things. Cool. Um, Then a question from Poland, Poland. Hello, Poland. Hello, Poland. Zdravo. <laughs> Are you considering adding the season's music to streaming services as you did with the core Battlefield 2042 soundtrack? I mean, this is something I keep hearing more and more. And obviously, the more amazing music we do release with seasons. So it's something that we hear you, we are looking into it, but there are multiple steps to take, such as legal and um, getting the approval. So um, I don't have any concrete answers at the moment, but we hear you. We agree the music is really awesome um, and we would love to give it uh, like more broader access to the players uh, through streaming services, but uh, I don't have any information at the yeah. moment. Yeah, well, I mean, we'd love to just yeah. get all our music and just dump it on Spotify and what, whatever, but like... It's we, not that we, simple. It's not that simple. <laughs> no. Like there is a lot of you know, you know, like rules or uh, I don't... Yeah. I, this thing I can't. Yeah, I can't even say the details because it's not my area of expertise. Yeah. I just know that I've got an answer when I ask, like, start poking about it. It's like, yeah, it's not simple as yeah, it's, it's yeah, not as simple as it's push a button. There we go. We are out there. Yeah. No, so but um, we would love to. Uh, yeah, we are investigating yeah. and trying to understand. Love, like, love to do it. What's the process and how can we do it and can we do it? Awesome. Question from anonymous sixty nine. Can the team please lower the end of round timer length? Currently, it's faster to leave. The lobby and search for a new game than to stay and wait in the lobby at the end of round. Hmm. Oh, I think this uh, player will like the the other updates in season four. Yeah, probably. exactly. So this is actually we're working on a lot of improvements for end of round throughout season four mm. at the moment. So the changes are incoming, um, and you'll experience them this season. The the last question is from Breakfast Lover four twenty. Scones for breakfast, yes or no? <laughs> oh, I didn't even see that one. Uh, seems like we had... Um... This is you, isn't it? You've asked that question. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I am devious, but I'm not that good with planning. <laughs> <laughs> I like to say I'm Cody Kewell. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, obviously, I brought scones for breakfast. So yeah. You did. So you are in the pro camp. <laughs> no. Afternoon tea. Afternoon tea. I mean, you can see British, not British. Yep. It's I just don't know why you would choose a scone for breakfast when there's like croissants. Like a black coffee and a croissant. Oh, yeah. Absolutely every time. Why you would pick a scone for breakfast? 
Because I mean, I, I like scones. I also like croissants. Oh no, okay, I like croissants. I love chocolate croissants. Chocolate croissants and coffee. Sure, but like croissants and chocolate on S tier. Scone for breakfast. <laughs> well, F. We should have like a, a yeah. tier list for yeah. breakfast items. We're like, oh, we should do that next time. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, I think yeah, I would really like to see that list. But, but they're yummy. I'm sorry, they're yummy. Again, for I'm not saying they're not yummy. I'm just saying they're not for breakfast. I'm, I'm if you go to, to if you go that. to the UK, you won't get that for. I mean, you yeah, might no, if you go to like should. Starbucks, they'll give you like an American scone, and you can have that and enjoy yourself, I suppose. But if in the UK <laughs> you get a full English, that's what you go for. You But want that I mean, as a I'm, breakfast. I get it. That's I get breakfast. it. I'm, I'm getting. We are kind of breaking all the British rules like here. Four thousand oh, calories yeah. of breakfast for a full English breakfast. That's breakfast in the UK. Four thousand calories for a breakfast. I have no idea if it's four thousand calories, but it's probably. Close. It is, it's Isn't it like double of what you're supposed to eat in the entire day? Yeah, there's like two two and a half. You're using euro. European measurements. We're using Brexit measurements. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, to to summarize, I think the scones are still a deci- divisive subject within Dice. Yeah, there are multiple camps: pro breakfast, afternoon tea. Um, Yeah, we're still. Yeah, there's Dis- still um, discussion. I think <laughs> discussions well, there's, the, there's, there's the wrong camp and the one that's steeped in tradition, which is correct, which is the afternoon tea one. To it's be, not yes and no. To be continued. Huh. Oh yes, <laughs> do have scones for breakfast. That's yummy. Um, but yeah, that's that's all we had for today, folks. So we'll take a short break after this episode, but we will be back in the future with more episodes. In the meantime, we'd still love your feedback, uh, thoughts, and questions. So get in touch with us at hashtag Inside Battlefield on socials or at podcast at battlefield.com. We would love to hear from you. I would love to thank Nika and Emma for being here again today, um, talking about more food, but also answering a lot of uh, a lot of uh, your Battlefield questions. So I, we hope it was informative for you. And thank you for listening to us. If you've like listened to all this <laughs> until the end, thanks so much for sticking around. Um, in the meantime, from all of us here at Dice, stay classy on the battlefield and PTFO. PTFO always. Bye bye, folks. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.